بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and I hope that you are ready for today's lesson which will be the reading of unit 2 but before we do that let's revise what we previously took the vocabulary building here we took uh, this, this exercise you will see these words in the reading on pages 26 and 27 which we will take now we will see these words, complete each sentence, and we finish this exercise using these words, assume, grim, pavement, coincidence, installed, suspect, display, and insured. And we uh, filled all the gaps here using these words. For example, the first one, the watch, is, that watch is valuable. You should have it insured in case it's ever stolen. And the second one, the police are looking for the suspect. He has dark hair and was wearing a green shirt. Then we uh, defined uh, these words. You will see these words in the reading on pages 26 and 27. The word assume, the, the, the definition for the word assume is supposed to be the case or you can say without proof. When you assume something, this is supposed to be the case, but you don't have any proof of that. You are just assuming. And we will see the word assume in the pages 26 and 27 in the article today, in this sentence, I assume your jewelry was insured. I, I assume your uh, jewelry, so we'll be talking about jewelry, uh, was insured. The second word grim, it means very serious or uh, gloomy, you can say sad or dark. This is the word grim. We will see it in this sentence. I have some grim news. Grim news. So grim here is an adjective actually. It's describing the news as gloomy or serious. Bob Reynolds has been murdered. So now we know why the news are grim, are gloomy, are dark. Someone was murdered. The word pavement is the sidewalk. We'll see it in this sentence. Uh, notice a lot of broken glass on the pavement. So there will be broken glass on the pavement, on the, pav the pavement. Uh, the word co coincidence uh, means by accident, something that's not intentional. You didn't mean to do it. So we will see this word in this sentence. It's a strange coincidence. It's a strange coincidence. Continuing with the word installed. Installed, a uh, place or fix, uh, equipment or machinery in a position ready for use. We will see this word in this sentence. I removed our old alarm system yesterday and made an appointment to have new one installed today. So he'll be installing a new alarm system. The next word is suspect. A person thought to be guilty of a crime or offense. Uh, or offense. A person thought to be, thought to be. He's not still not guilty, but he's thought to be guilty. What crime does Combs suspect Mr. Jones of committing and why? What crime does Mr. Combs suspect? Here suspect is a verb. Unlike here, it's a noun. Suspect. He suspects that this man is the criminal. He's not sure. He's just suspecting. Here it's a verb and here it's a noun. Uh, the word display, exhibition, things you show to people. I looked up and realized that the display window had been broken. The last one, the word insured means covered by insurance. We will see it in this uh, sentence, the same sentence as before. I assume your jewelry was insured. I assume your jewelry was insured. So these are the objectives for today's lesson. Uh, lesson objectives, organize pieces of crime puzzle. Organize pieces of crime puzzle. We'll be uh, dealing with a lot of uh, puzzles uh, regarding crime. Uh, paraphrase parts of the reading. Paraphrase parts of the reading. What's the meaning of the word paraphrase? When you read an article and paraphrase it, try to say it in a, using other words, maybe even try to shorten it a little bit. Uh, find out whether a sentence is true or false. We'll be answering true or false. Find out the meaning of new words in the text, which we'll be learning today.
So before reading, of course, you see from the picture the uh, siren uh, above the police car. You know all this article will be talking about criminals and crime. What mystery or crime stories have you read? Talk about uh, char the characters and the story. Have you read any stories regarding crimes, uh, criminals? Uh, do you, did you like the characters in these stories? So again, this is the before reading question. What mystery or crime stories have you read? Talk about the characters and the story. So you can share the stories among each other and then you uh, tell your friend what uh, character did you like in each story. So this is uh, the jigsaw reading. Of course, you know the word jigsaw. This is the uh, puzzle solving game, the jigsaw. What about when we say jigsaw reading? What does it mean, a jigsaw reading? The jigsaw reading is if we have a long article and we divide it into parts, I assign each group into part or each student into part. For example, if you have four parts for an article and I have four students, once they read uh, what uh, each student uh, read his part, I will tell him to go to his friend and explain what has he read or maybe to paraphrase or summarize what has he read. So, uh, and, and so, and so, so student number one will explain to student number two and student number two will explain to student number three and so. So by the end, everyone will understand the whole article. So this is the jigsaw reading. If you, you can say exchanging information among the students. If you remember before we said brainstorming, exchanging ideas. Here it's exchanging what did you understand from the text. So this is the jigsaw reading. This is uh, today's uh, article, crime puzzles, crime puzzles. We will listen now to the first case, the case of the stolen jewels, the case of the stolen jewels. So let's listen. The case of the stolen jewels. Detective Combs was at the coffee shop around the corner when he learned that Jones's jewelry had been broken into. He arrived at the scene of the burglary in moments. Mr. Jones, the owner of the store, explained what had happened. I arrived this morning to open up the store. As I walked up to my shop, I noticed a lot of broken glass on the pavement. I looked up and realized that the display window had been broken. Combs looked out the broken window at the sidewalk, littered with glass. Mr. Jones continued, then I saw that all of the jewelry from the display window was gone. The doors were still locked, so this must be where the burglar broke in. Why didn't the alarm go off? asked Coombs. It's a strange coincidence, said Mr. Jones. I removed our old alarm system yesterday and made an appointment to have a new one installed today. Combs looked around at the empty jewelry cases. I assume your jewelry was injured? Of course, said Mr. Jones. Thank goodness for that. Combs nodded and said, Mr. Jones, I believe there was a crime indeed. And it was committed by you. What crime does Combs suspect Mr. Jones of committing? Why? And why? So what crime does uh, Mr. Combs, he's a detective of course, uh, does he suspect Mr. Jones of committing? Of course, the story is Mr. Jones, an owner of the jewelry store. Once he called the police, the detective arrived, Mr. Combs, and then he saw the glass outside the store on the pavement. And once he uh, asked Mr. Jones, uh, have you in, uh, do you have an insurance in your jewelry? He said, yes. So here, the, this uh, rose the suspicion of Mr. Jones with Mr. Combs. So why did he accuse Mr. Jones that he committed the crime? Based on what evidence? Based on what evidence? Of course, we'll be answering this later. Of course, we'll be answering this later. Let's take the other article here, the case of the bowling alley murder the case of the bowling alley murder. Let's listen. The case of the bowling alley murder. The Center Street bowling alley, the oldest bowling alley in the city, closed at midnight. At 4 a.m., 
the janitor found a terrible sight, a man with a knife in his back lying in one of the lanes. Detective Combs quickly arrived at the scene with a swarm of police officers. Anybody know the victim? asked Coombs. I do, said one of the officers. That's Bob Reynolds. He's running for councilman. He and Mike Jenner have been having a bitter campaign battle. Perhaps we should pay Mr. Jenner a visit, said Coombs. Before leaving the bowling alley, Combs took his cell phone out of his pocket and left it behind. On arriving at Mike Jenner's house, Combs told Jenner, I have some grim news. Bob Reynolds has been murdered. No. I can't believe it, cried Jenner. We'd like to speak with you about the murder. But first, I need to get back to the police station to file a report. Can you meet me at the station? Of course. I'll help in any way I can. I'll give you a call. Combs patted his pocket. Oh, I must have left my cell phone at the bowling alley. Would you mind picking it up and bringing it with you to the station? Jenna looked confused, but said, sure. I'll do anything to help with the investigation. Later that day, Jenna brought Combs's cell phone to the station. He was arrested and charged with murder. Why? So why was Mr. Jenner accused uh, with uh, murder? What, based on what evidence, what did Mr. Combs do to, uh, that led him to think that Mr. Jenner is the culprit here, is the man who uh, commit the murder? Once you read it again, you can find out. But of course, we'll be answering that later. So here are the answers. Here are the answers. The first one, the case of the stolen jewels. Detective Combs suspects that Mr. Jones took the jewelry himself and pretended that there had been a burglary so he could collect insurance money. The broken window is Combs' clue. Remember when I asked you based on what evidence, what were the clues that Mr. Combs, uh, Mr. Combs built his ideas on? These are the clues. If someone had broken into the shop, the broken glass should have been on the inside of the shop. If someone came from outside the shop and broke the glass in order to get into the shop, the pieces of the glass would be inside, not outside on the pavement. Since it was outside the store, the window must have been broken from the inside. So this means that once he saw the, uh, the glass outside on the pavement, he knew that it was an inside job. That's why he asked where the jewelry insured. Once he said yes, he knew everything that he hid the jewelry and he claimed that they were stolen so he could collect the insurance money. What about the case of the bowling alley murder? Detective Combs never told Mr. Jenner in which bowling alley the murder took place. He never told him in which bowling alley. There were many bowling alleys in the city. He never told him which one was the murder at. Yet, Mr. Jenner knew which bowling alley to go to for Combs's phone. Mr. Jenner must have known where the murder took place because he was there. When Mr. Combs told Mr. Jenner, who, when you come to the police station, can you stop by, uh, stop by the alley and bring my phone? He said, yes. He didn't ask which bowling alley. That's why he knew where the murder took place and went there. So this is the evidence Mr. Combs built his ideas and his suspicions on. Okay, let's jump here to the next. Uh, read the definitions and give the correct word from the text. We have here five definitions, two from the case of the stolen jewels and three from the case of the bowling alley murder. So we have the definition, the whole definition, and I want you just to give me the correct term or the correct word for this definition. The first here from the case of the stolen jewels, left lying in a mess all over a certain area. The second one moved the head up and down to agree, to move the head up and down to agree. And the three from the case of the stalling, uh, the bowling alley murder, a large number of something, the second one, full of angry, unhappy feelings. Last one, touch quickly with the flat part of the hand. To touch quickly with the flat part 
of the hand from here. So these are the definitions. I want you to give me the terms. We will listen again to the articles. Then you will give me your answer. Let's listen again. The case of the stolen jewels. Detective Combs was at the coffee shop around the corner when he learned that Jones's jewelry had been broken into. He arrived at the scene of the burglary in moments. Mr. Jones, the owner of the store, explained what had happened. I arrived this morning to open up the store. As I walked up to my shop, I noticed a lot of broken glass on the pavement. I looked up and realized that the display window had been broken. Combs looked out the broken window at the sidewalk, littered with glass. Mr. Jones continued, then I saw that all of the jewelry from the display window was gone. The doors were still locked, so this must be where the burglar broke in. Why didn't the alarm go off? asked Coombs. It's a strange coincidence, said Mr. Jones. I removed our old alarm system yesterday and made an appointment to have a new one installed today. Combs looked around at the empty jewelry cases. I assume your jewelry was injured? Of course, said Mr. Jones. Thank goodness for that. Combs nodded and said, Mr. Jones, I believe there was a crime indeed. And it was committed by you. What crime does Combs suspect Mr. Jones of committing? Why? And why? Of course, we have answered this uh, the question, the why. So let's continue with the second article here, the case of the bowling alley. And remember the uh, definitions that we are looking for. Let's listen. The case of the bowling alley murder. The Center Street bowling alley, the oldest bowling alley in the city, closed at midnight. At 4 a.m., the janitor found a terrible sight, a man with a knife in his back lying in one of the lanes. Detective Combs quickly arrived at the scene with a swarm of police officers. Anybody know the victim? asked Coombs. I do, said one of the officers. That's Bob Reynolds. He's running for councilman. He and Mike Jenner have been having a bitter campaign battle. Perhaps we should pay Mr. Jenner a visit, said Coombs. Before leaving the bowling alley, Combs took his cell phone out of his pocket and left it behind. On arriving at Mike Jenner's house, Combs told Jenner, I have some grim news. Bob Reynolds has been murdered. No. I can't believe it, cried Jenner. We'd like to speak with you about the murder. But first, I need to get back to the police station to file a report. Can you meet me at the station? Of course. I'll help in any way I can. I'll give you a call. Combs patted his pocket. Oh, I must have left my cell phone at the bowling alley. Would you mind picking it up and bringing it with you to the station? Jenna looked confused, but said, sure. I'll do anything to help with the investigation. Later that day, Jenna brought Combs' cell phone to the station. He was arrested and charged with murder. Why? So, uh, Mr. Combs leaving his phone was an extremely uh, clever move from him. He is trying to bait Jenner to see if he will know which alley or not. So, going back here, read the definitions. So, these are the definitions. The first one, left lying in a mess all over a certain area. Left lying in a mess all over a certain area. So, which uh, word is uh, f does fit this uh, definition here yes very good in paragraph two the word littered littered the word littered is uh, the meaning of left lying ms all over the area what about the second one move the head up and down to agree move the head up and down to agree I think this is an easy one. It's the word, yes, nod or nodded. Mr. Combs nodded to move your head up and down to agree. When you agree with something, you say, yes, that's correct. You nod your head up and down. The third one here in the second article, the case of the bowling alley murder, a large number of something. A large number of something, of anything. When you have a large sum a number of something, Yes, that's correct. The word swarm in the, in the first paragraph. 
full of angry and happy feelings. When you're full of uh, feelings that are uh, unhappy and angry, it means that you are what? What do you say? Yes, bitter. You are, when you say he is bitter, it means that he is now uh, uh, full of uh, unhappy feelings, maybe frustrated even. The last one, touch quickly with the flat part of the hand. Touch quickly, touch quickly with the uh, flat part of the hand. Yes, the word pat, pat, like when you pat a little child, this is to touch quickly and softly with your flat, uh, with the, part, the flat part of your hand. So these are the after reading questions, true or false. The first one, Detective Combs was at the police station when he heard about the robbery. Mr. Combs, the detective, was at the police station when he heard about the robbery. So it's false. So what is the correct here? Yes, he was at the coffee shop. This is the correct answer. He was at the coffee shop when he heard about the robbery. Number two, the broken glass was inside the store. The broken glass, was it inside or outside the store? Very good. Very good. It's false. It was outside on the sidewalk, So, the, which was the evidence that Mr. Combs based his uh, whole suspicion on. Number three, the Center Street bowling alley is the only bowling alley in the city. How did they describe the bowling alley in the article? Did they say it's the only one? Yes, that's correct. It's false. They, they said, the story says it was the oldest bowling alley. And when you say the oldest, this means there are others. This implies there are others. What about number four? Mike Jenner was Bob Reynolds' friend. Were they friends? Of course, this is false. They were having a bitter campaign battle. They were having a bitter campaign battle. The last one, Combs left his cell phone at the bowling alley on purpose. When he left it at the alley, was it on purpose or not? Of course, it was on purpose to bait Mr. Jenner. And with that, we reach to the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, insha'Allah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfirka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.